So, what do you think? What me? What I think doesn't matter, because at this point I had already bought this thing sight unseen. So let's just put our stuff on it and get going. Here comes the motor. Take your seat. Start the engine. And off we go. One thing I can say right away, it was really, really hot that day. So let's have a look at the trip we have ahead of us. We start in the very northeast of Germany, close to the border with Poland. It's a total of 291 kilometers. It's roughly 45 hours of driving at an average speed of 6 to 7 kilometers per hour. And there are five water gates. The trip takes us partially through Poland, then back into Germany, northeast from Berlin. Then we do a long arc around Berlin and then we come back into the city from the northwest. So let's get started on those first few kilometers of our trip, which bring us to a very big lake called the Zetjin Lagoon. Now I'm sure you're wondering, what is this water vessel that we just bought and prepared to spend the next three to four days on? Well, it's an old barge, a flat bottomed boat built mainly for river and canal transport of bulk goods. Typically, they do not have their own engines, but rely on being pushed or pulled by so-called pusher boats or pusher tugs or tow boats. Ours had been converted by the previous owner to be fitted with an outboard motor. Along the way, we noticed that this boat is actually very maneuverable very easy to drive and in fact quite comfortable. Steering is done by gently pushing the engine left or right with the tip of your fingers. Or you can also use your foot. As a backup, we brought our 2.3 horsepower Honda motor. And I'm sure you wonder what's under the deck. Currently, there are three big water tanks. Now then, let's continue with our trip. As we approach the border to Poland, a huge gate-like structure starts appearing. We are now pretty much in the middle of the Zetjin Lagoon. And in case you wonder where we get those great maps from, we are using an app called Navinaut. Navinaut is similar to Google Maps, but for the waterways. Currently, it's available for Germany and some of its surrounding countries. So if you are navigating in those areas, do check it out. 
Personally, I use it all the time and I wouldn't go on a trip without it. Alright, now we are back on the water, approaching what seems to be some kind of a portal to another galaxy. We are now just meters away from the border to Poland, and it was right after we passed this Stargate that we had our first major incident. What happened was that the engine mount broke. The seller had used some very inadequate wood to build a makeshift engine mount, and what you see here is already the improved version, which we did on the water. Anyway, such a small incident cannot hold us back. And so I got busy building the navigation lights. powered by two 12 volt batteries, one of our good old Firefly batteries and this tiny lithium battery. Red for the port side, green for the starboard side, this is supposed to be our top light and this is the stern light slash anchor light. And like this we cruised through the sunset into the night. The next morning the sun was beating down on us relentlessly right from the first hours. By now we were deep into Polish territory, past the city of Zechin strolling down the calm and beautiful canals back towards the German border. Late in the afternoon that day we arrived at our first water gate. This one is located right at the border back to Germany. We wait for the lights to go green and then we drive in. Passing a water gate with this vessel is nothing to be afraid of. For one, we are not afraid of any scratches to the hull, since the overhanging wood planks will absorb any impact. For another, compared to its size, the vessel is actually very lightweight and can therefore be easily manhandled even by just a single person. And finally, you have all this free deck space to operate from, which makes finding the right position to have a good grip and push or pull the vessel in any direction an easy task. Just a few kilometers after the first water gate, we arrived at this boat lift, also called a ship lift or a lift lock. After getting over the fact that they would operate this huge machine just for our crappy little barge, we sat back and enjoyed the lift. A ship lift, as its name suggests, lifts up or down the entire section of a river or canal that would usually sit between two water gates and just get flooded or drained to achieve the desired change of water level. The one we are using here is actually Germany's oldest boat lift. It was built in 1934 and has a difference of 36 meters in elevation. And it takes about 5 minutes to get there. Right now that we are pumped up with historical and factual information about boat lifts, let's continue our journey. At this point we still have about 24 hours of pure driving ahead of us. It was starting to get dark and a storm was announced to hit our area anytime soon. So I first built a little shelter to prevent us from getting too wet. We then stopped at the marina to spend the night since we were both exhausted 
and the storm was still hanging over us. Can you spot the intruder? Hmm, I feel like one of those boats is sticking out from the group. And there seems to be a slight difference in comfort level for the passengers as well. And so we spent the night in the safety of the marina. The next day at dawn we took off again. As we kept advancing along this water road, any signs of human existence became more and more scarce. And while my friend was driving us slowly and steadily home, I kept busy with some office work, preparing the anchor gear, building an anchor weight, times just enjoying the ride and of course I would also drive from time to time to allow my friend to get a few hours of rest every now and then Here is another water gate. Once again, no challenge for this boat and crew. We passed by several heavy duty industrial plants. It could get quite narrow at times. We then passed the last large water body. Before arriving at our second to last water gate at the entrance of the city. It was quite late, so we were lucky to be able to pass through at all. And here we are finally, cruising through the very center of Berlin. At this point, you could almost say we made it. We even passed by Angela Merkel's office. Now. Before we move on to the final part of this video, there is one curious phenomena that I would like to address. People were staring, smiling and pointing at us all the time. And who could blame them? It's not every day that you see a runaway wooden terrace floating on the water. Another thing I would like to point out is that from my nicely edited and curated video you may get the impression that this trip was smooth sailing all along. But I can tell you it was not. It was in fact the single most difficult and challenging 3 day experience I ever had in my life. Even though we thought ourselves well prepared for any type of situation there had been a few very close encounters. And if it hadn't been for the experience and composure of my friend, some of these situations could have been the end of it. And while I'm not gonna share all the details of these situations, I do want to leave you with a word of caution. If you are an inexperienced boater like myself, do not underestimate the dangers and challenges that you will face on such a trip. 50 hours of driving is not fun and games and boats aren't toys. Alright, so please take that as my disclaimer for this video and with that, let us move on to anchoring.
I bought a 10 mm chain with a 16 mm rope and a 22 kilo plow anchor. And of course this 28 kilos homemade anchor weight. Here I'm pulling up the anchor gear which we threw in the night before upon arriving in the middle of the night. After attaching the anchor properly to the anchor chain, I'm also attaching an anchor buoy, so that even if the anchor got loose from the chain, we should still be able to locate it thanks to the boy. And I will describe more amply in future videos how our anchor gear works. For now, let us stop for a moment and acknowledge that the deed is done. With successfully anchoring the platform, the trip is officially over. At this point, I also want to thank my friends who helped me put this together. I couldn't have done it without them. The last thing to do is to bring our first boat over and dock it to the new platform.